There was frost on the ground, and it was too warm. Abigail was an old woman, and the mornings seemed colder every day. But the sun had been out for too long already. The school buses had come and gone, and so had the paper, and eventually the mail. It was the last of these that she had come out for. She was in only a bathrobe and slippers, and this even was stifling under the heat of the sun. She walked down the steps. Closer, on an even plane, she could see the peculiarity clearly. What had yesterday been a dense yellowed lawn, tufted and sprawled in nature's lax blueprint, was clinical today, militant. She could only see row after row of orderly blades pushing up from the dirt. Even as teeth and rounded as rats' tails, Abigail saw a lot of things these days. A cursory glance from side to side noted that the frost hadn't inhabited every neat suburban lawn, but had dotted from house to house, ignoring some and favoring others. Each house it had chosen had been completely taken, filling every space where grass had been before. Where boundaries touched without fences, the lines ran straight, green and white, as neatly divided as if with painter's tape. Each icy blade rippled. There was no wind. Abigail wanted her mail. She stepped into the yard, and it retreated around her foot. The frost tails would not be trod on, instead sinking noiselessly into the earth. When she lifted her foot, they rose again, inorganically, like pegs out of holes. Her footsteps were cautious at first, but it continued to seep to her, and she put it from her mind. She'd become very good at putting things from her mind. The pills helped, but she worked very hard at her own part of it, and she was proud of that. And she thought the doctors were too. She wouldn't put all of her burden on medicine. She would carry her own yoke, like the good book said, and she would be blessed. When she reached the mailbox, Abigail sorted its contents: catalogs, sweepstakes entries, less each day. She clutched it to her weathered breast and returned to the yard. The sea of blades gave way beneath her feet. She smiled faintly at that. She was a queen before her subjects, Moses parting the waters. Moving slowly, taking up a last draught of sunlight, Abigail went into her house and locked the door. She was an old woman, and the pills diluted her senses. It wouldn't be until she bathed that night that she noticed the scratch on her ankle. The pain wasn't bad that night, and neither was the TV. Abigail rarely paid much attention to what she watched anymore, but what was on was soothing. There were some shows about selling and buying strange old antiques, and those were the kind she liked the best. She enjoyed humoring silly fancies that lighted in her of her grandmother's pochette being worth more than the junk metal she knew it to be, of selling it for six or seven hundred dollars, and treating her grandniece to something her mother would disapprove of, something ridiculously lavish, like a rocking horse from that fancy shop in New York City, or a teddy bear so enormous the precious little one could sit in its lap and fall asleep. The worm, or what she supposed was a worm, was white, like the rat tail blades of the yard, but more complex, more sophisticated. It was as thick and as long as a child's finger, and segmented, ending in a split portion like a snake's tongue or a fly's foot. It was rigid, skeletal, and dry, except for where it emerged from the hole in her leg. The end curled in on itself just a little, fish hooked, and she found herself idly dragging her fingertips over it, letting it catch her skin just a little. She had tried pulling it out when she first saw it, and there had been a feeling like a knot seizing up her nerves, a terrible sticky heaviness, and she had not tried that again. It was her fault, she supposed, for not dabbing it with iodine much earlier. But it didn't hurt to dab it now, so she dutifully freshened up the hole whenever it felt dry or whenever she remembered. She had taken one of the few knives left in the kitchen and cut at it sporadically, but the way her hands shook, she couldn't keep cutting at one place long enough to break it. It was as hard as teeth, silent. Still, and somehow soothing. The doctor would come tomorrow. He was scheduled for her regular visit, so it wouldn't do to make a fuss. The pain wasn't bad, although when she got up to take her pills, Abigail hobbled slightly, her leg feeling heavy and full of bone. She had known the nerves were going in her feet, and despite herself, the thought of complications frightened her, and it shamed her a little. The doctors were kind, and she tried to be good for them. She took care of herself. She ate what they said, and she exercised. She even got her own mail, and now she was taking care of herself. She was using iodine, and she was keeping the wound elevated. And if it started swelling, she would put ice on it. It would stay safe and still, and this lonesome, orderly worm would be left as it was. The doctors would be so proud. They would be so proud. Fire didn't work. That had been the first solution to the polluted ground. They tried industrial chemicals and pesticides and water and salt, but it didn't work. The rat tails just retreated underground, and there wasn't any digging them up. 
They just went deeper and deeper, and God only knew where they ended. Sonar showed forests of them thronging through the earth. They went deep. That's all anyone could say after a while. They went deep. It was late on the fourth day of the quarantine that they reached Abigail's house. The yard was infested, but the one next to it wasn't, and the porch wrapped around to the side, making breaking in through the sliding glass door a matter of little difficulty. Flashlights swept the room, dark paneling, brown rugs. One caught on the television set, casting a shadow over the thing on the couch, illuminating the edges of pins and needles, frost and bone on what was once a leg. An elegant hand, a scalp with a few strands of long silver hair still clinging to it. There was a voice like rustling leaves. You weren't worried, were you, Dr. Baxter? An oath, or a prayer, or a combination of the two, dropped from an agent's lips and fell muffled into the confines of his hazmat suit and disappeared. An old woman can still take care of herself. There was a clicking in the dark, endless clicking like chattering teeth as the thing began to stand. I've even been taking my pills. There was a tedious, loud, abrasive sound, and Abigail's body moved no more. Her skin rippled. There was no wind.